Hi, my name is Jay Haidt. I'm a family law attorney here in Israel, and I want to talk about something that I comes up a lot in my practice, representing somebody in a divorce. And all of a sudden they come and they say, hey, my spouse has been bad mouthing me. And it happens a lot. And it's a horrible thing. And everybody knows that we have this law here in Israel, right? It's called Chok uh, Isur Lashon Hara, which means basically the law against defamation. And everyone says, hey, I want to go after my spouse. We're in a divorce case already in any way. So let's just add more. So first of all, can you do it? How does it work? What's the story? That's what I'd like to address in this video today. Just uh, so that you know, the this law, it's not only civil, it's also civil and criminal. So yeah, yes, everyone knows that you can sue for each occurrence of this defamation for uh, up to 50 to 100,000. But in addition to that, if you make a criminal complaint and if the police decide to prosecute it, they won't, at least between spouses, they won't. But if they did, then the person could get up to a, a year in jail. In any case, there are a whole bunch of things that just people don't realize. And that's part of the reason that I'm making this video. So for example, people read the lawsuit that's been filed against them or the response and they go, oh my God, can you believe what she said or what he said? I want to sue for that. Well, first of all, it doesn't work that way. You're not allowed to sue. You can't call defamation things that are said in the lawsuit, okay? The defamation has to be made to a third party, number one. And number two, of course, the other thing is that it has to be damaging. So definitely the things that are in the lawsuits that the mud that people are throwing around a lot of times is damaging. But by definition, stuff in a lawsuit isn't considered to be a defamation because, you know, the judge is going to have to go through and decide. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. And uh, just as a general rule, in any case, there are 13 categories of things. There's a list of 13 things that will never be Lashon Hara. They will never be uh, defamation. Okay, so for example, things that are said in, in, in the Knesset or in a shiva of the government, okay? Things that are said by the Vakerha Medina, uh, things that are said by a, a judge, whether it's a rabbinical count judge, court judge, or a regular court judge as when he's acting as a judge. I mean, what else? Things that are said in international negotiations with things, you know, et cetera. I mean, so there's just a whole bunch of things that aren't even included or things where you give a, a summary of things that have been given in a legal directory, okay? Things like that, i.e. if I were to start reading things about my spouse from something that had been in a public paper, you know, that's not going to be good, considered lection hora, okay? So I guess you have to have those two things, like I said, it has to be something that subjectively the reasonable person would find insulting, and it has to be something that you found insulting, and that was published to others, which is the other thing, what is published to others? You know, if I'm just uh, speaking to you, my spouse, and saying things, well, that's never going to be. Cases nowadays are when the spouse goes and starts bad-mouthing the other spouse on social media networks. In other words, when there are Facebook posts about things, when there are posts about an Instagram or wherever it is, talking about one of the spouses being really bad, that raises a red flag, right? You know, those are the cases where you say, oh, there might be something here. Another case is when people go and make false claims, false police claims, right? We call that Lunat Shav, when they do that in order to try to get some type of tactical advantage in their divorce. That's a, another great case for us as attorneys to say, hey, that's Lashon Hara, you should definitely be, be suing. And remember, this is something that a lot of people don't remember. If you are bringing a defamation case, and you're already in front of a family court judge, right? Well, your case is gonna to continue to be heard in front of that judge. So there are pluses and minuses there, right? Some of the pluses are that, hey, the judge gets a, a real idea of who they're dealing with, okay? But one of the minuses is that a lot of times the judge might discount it. They might say, eh, you know, things were going really bad, they were really fighting, and they won't give you, you know, I would say the, type of care that you would get if you were just having a uh, regular case against somebody who wasn't your spouse and not in the course of the divorce, okay? Uh, in any case, let's look at some other interesting 
information that I've gleaned for you. Well, first of all, some interesting parts of the law, okay, uh, sections of the law. Section one defines what Lashon Hara or defamation is, okay, uh, and it's the expression that has been publicized in order to lower somebody else, okay, and it can be over age, uh, religion, etc. cetera, uh, just saying they're a bad person. Uh, also, if you try to hurt somebody's job or his uh, occupation by publishing bad things about them, well, that's Lashon Hara. Uh, also, the types of ways of talking, in other words, what is the pursum? What is the uh, publication? So as I told you, my favorite ones are the ones that are on social medias, but it can be oral. It could be written. It could be on a painting, things like that. I had talked about the criminal liability, like I said, in accordance with Section 6, someone can go to jail for up to a year if they do it. Again, I haven't really seen it, but I have seen a lot of the uh, civil liabilities. Now, what I usually find is that people will win an amount, but it'll never be the full amount. In other words, the way the, rule, the law works is that even if you can't prove damages, you can get 50,000 shekels, and that can be doubled in some cases, so up to 100,000 shekels without proving damages. And if you can prove specific damages, then you can get whatever that damage amount is, okay? But as I said, there are the defenses that I spoke about before, and above and beyond that, there are other defenses, okay? So for example, people always try to go and say, well, you know, there's a defense called emet be persum, the truth in whatever they've advertised. Another one is that it was done in good faith. In other words, they didn't realize that what they were saying was Lashon Hora even. Again, there are instances where things are excluded because of, you know, if someone is an Ish Tzibor, someone who is known in public, someone who's famous, etc. And just since I mentioned the uh, Tom Lev uh, in good faith, well, when it's something where you're giving an opinion and the person gets hurt, that isn't always in good faith. So be careful when you say things about that. And the most interesting case I had there was where someone said stuff about some artwork that someone had done, that their spouse had done. And that was considered. And before the divorce, they hadn't been considered, they hadn't said bad stuff about his artwork. Afterwards, they did. And boom, in that case, they did consider it Lashon Hara. So why am I telling you all this information? Just because I find out I, all too often, two things happen. First of all, people who are going through divorces come to me and start saying, hey, my uh, spouse is bad now than me. So I'm telling you guys, you shouldn't be doing it. It's not going to help you. And it could lead to a potential uh, suit against you for defamation. So that's number one. And then number two is because I can't tell you how many times uh, I see people who really just intend to vent, but they end up going on to Facebook groups or into uh, WhatsApp groups I've seen also, and they start saying these things about their spouse. And I'm looking and saying, whoa, what did you do? Do you not realize that you're opening yourself up to a potential suit and to potential legal liabilities? So what I suggest is, hey, don't badmouth your spouse. Uh, in front of other people. If you're going to, I mean, maybe just tell your best friend the things that are happening, make sure it doesn't go further, because if the best friend decides to publish those things, well, you still got a problem, as does the best friend. But, you know, don't air your dirty laundry in public, especially when you're going through a divorce. So that's all for today. This is Jay Height. I hope to be able to give you some more information about how things work when you're getting divorced in Israel. If you have any questions, or if you want me to speak about something specific, then send me an email. You can go through my YouTube channel and reach me from there. And it's jay.hait at orcheidin, O-R-C-H-E-I-D-I-N dot C-O dot I-L. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.